Hi everyone, welcome back to the channel and a new video on the little 2016, I think this is, Range Rover Evoque. There was quite a stir in the comments of the last video and quite a lot of people hate on the old Land Rovers, Chris, I'm not going to lie. More people hated it than they liked it. And they said, oh, I wouldn't have a Land Rover, all these... It's like any car, you're going to get problems. If we did a video on that Polo, someone would say there's something on them cars that always goes wrong head gasket or wiring issue like on various cars there is always leave that alone you there is always issues with cars now with this one it is a manual and if you are going to work on one of these this is the one to work on chris i'll tell you why it is a two-wheel front wheel drive car yeah. It's manual, it's a lot easier to work on smaller than an auto, transition. a lot smaller. There's no transfer box in there for no. four-wheel drive, so no. this is probably the easiest of oak to work on. But yeah, like I said, quite a lot of you in the comments section, already in all the other videos, what's going to, you know, when are you getting on with this? They can't wait to see as much as we can, so we're going to pull it inside, mate, and make a start yeah. on a bit of an investigation, yeah? Yeah. Let's get, let's get it in. So just from pre previously working on these sort of vehicles, we know that it really does make sense. And also, I would say it's probably purely for a filming point of view, we actually remove the bonnet because it allows a lot more light in. It does give us more light as well, it but... It's easy to keep headbutting it when you're... It is key. <laughs> you're right. It, it, is, is, it, is. it is easy to keep headbutting it. So we just took the bonnet off and it's created basically an open space for us to work and we worked a bit in harmony there and it all went quite quickly what we wanted to do in this bit of time lapse the last bit was actually strip off a lot of stuff so that we weren't time lapsing all day trying to undo stuff basically ultimately wasn't it so chris removed removed the fuel housing and I removed like the battery, the battery tray, the air box, just to get a few bits out of the way, because I guess we want to get inside that rocker box cover, Chris, do don't we? And see what's going on. I reckon there's a load of little uh, lift followers in there, all oh, I think, I all think... broken and oh, beaten up. Yeah, so we're going to see, aren't we? Quite a lot of people in the comments actually knew a lot about these. Yeah. You've got various messages on Instagram saying. I'm a Land Rover tech. I would go as far as to say we had five separate people all said they worked at Land Rover and if we needed any help, we was welcome to give them a call. Yeah, one guy said that he works at Land Rover and he, he said there's something like 20 customer vehicles waiting for their engines. Is there really? Yeah, whether that, you, know, you take that with a pinch of salt, it might be a little bit exaggerated, but... It's not a very good advert though, is it? It's not, is it? It's not. But it's always lovely when they're going. Right? Yeah, they oh. do. Well, I've I've said this before. Um, I bought Claire the white one, the '61 Reg one. She had that car for 18 months, and it never skipped a beat to the point where she liked it so much. I bought her the facelift grey one, and she had that car for nearly two years, and again, never had a problem with it. But they was both under 50,000 we miles. A bit old school in servicing. We kind of. We don't even look at service intervals. No, we just... 6,000 miles, oil and field. Yeah, range, that's it, we do it. Yeah. And I think some of these extend, these drawn-out service intervals are not... Well, they've been proven, haven't they, on the transits with the timing belt and on these in particular. Anyway, not going to waffle on too much. We want to. We just want to continue on, get this clear and actually get that removed before we do another cutting because we don't want to just keep... Bit of time lapse, bit of removing, bit of, you get the idea, guys. So we're going to crack on. Right, 
a lot of stripping down there and we didn't actually, we stopped for the last hour because we didn't want a time lapse. But Houston, we found the problem. If this, this Range Rover has not got a snapped timing chain, guys, but I'm going to come around here, Chris, before I get you to go to the front and I'll zoom right in. There's the cam that wasn't turning and what's the problem with it, mate? Well, that bolt is very loose. The cam has actually come undone. The sprocket off the end. Yeah. Is that, that must be Dale, Dale though, Chris. Well, is it? I don't know. That's, Sometimes they're not, are they? That's definitely to, to the issue, you though. To do uh, very accurate timing, but even yeah. all of the guides all look okay. And I'll take it that's your pump chain. Yeah. Well, it must be, mustn't it? Yeah. That's well, not broken. So, that's why it sounded well, like Well, I'm it. looking where that is. That's an odd place for an oil pump. That's got to be a balance shaft that's driving, hasn't it? We'll never look where it is. Yeah, but it'll go down to the oil pump in the sump. No, it'll go the crank. It it'll be on the crank. It's driving a balance shaft, I think. I don't know is the honest truth, Rob. I don't know, but it's very high up, isn't it? But and it's driving something that way, which would indicate a balance shaft but none of that looks to be any problem i'm guessing when we was turning it over all that was turning and that sprocket that just spinning that nut that bolt rather had stayed in there enough that see, it was still it was turning that's why that camshaft wasn't turning when we cranked it hence why it wasn't starting yeah, it was still had done the damage though of or it won't have done anything on the uh exhaust side will it but on the inlet side we're going to have potential um rocker cam or yeah. valve damage aren't we but we get we, we haven't got we've got to obviously remove that chain off the end or that other sprocket and we should be able to lift that whole cam carrier off shouldn't we yeah all the bolts are out and so then no, wouldn't we? yeah we'll be able to see straight away out of fault it's nice because once we got that off we're actually going to know where we're at with this i think mm. so it looks like the train tensioner I is mean, quite the nice if it's actually only done rockers and can i don't think it will have done but how nice would it be we'd be getting quite lucky yeah. but what has caused that though chris to undo can can we whip that right out and just yeah, see if I that's think, got a some I mean, sort of dowel in it. I'd, in fact, if probably, I if I undo that, you'll be able to pull that cog off the end. I don't think you will because the the chain won't have that amount of give in it. It's a long old bolt. Mm. I can see now anyway. Can I just wipe that off, Chris? See, it looks like it's on a pin now. Has that snapped? I think the end of that cam snapped, mate, I do. Why would that bolt come undone? I don't know. It's obviously under pressure. I do think the, the cam snapped, I mean, but I guess, like we said, we're not gonna know. I can see the tensioner down there. Yeah, so that'd be relatively easy, and then we we try and tie that up, won't we? Best let's, we can. Let's, we oh. might have to look into that. We might have to look into that variable cam sprocket whether we need to remove that or not Rob I'd rather not take that apart at all would you hopefully we can take the, the, the tension out of the chain and um, bearing in mind this one's already off hopefully there'll be enough to enough slack to just whip it off we'd better mark it all up haven't we yeah well, right let's time it up before we do yeah, there's a mark you. there on that sprocket look there's a dimple there. Let me zoom in a little bit. See that? Yes, I can. Yeah. But obviously, um, it should, it should, unless it's jumped, and I don't think it's ever jumped, do you? Theoretically, we should be able to turn that and get them, them marks lined up, shouldn't we? Yeah, but it's, 
Yeah, we'll have to get on. It's stayed in sync, hasn't it? Because the chain's stayed on. Yeah. It's just not driven the cam. The cam's stationary, but it should actually still all time up, theoretically. Right, all we can do is, you're right, time it up, mark it up and have a look. Mm -hmm. And then, obviously, we'll turn it over by hand and see if we've got both cams turning Luckily, this time. Josh has done quite a few of these, hasn't he? Yeah, do you think, give him a shout. <laughs> we might be picking his brains. Or borrowing his tool, yeah. yeah. We might be, mightn't we? A little bit more in depth there, and actually, don't mind admitting, took, took a little bit of advice there, Chris. We did. We give Josh a call at JR. We know he does these day in, day out. As soon as I mentioned the bolt, he went, yeah, common. As soon as we undone the bolt, the dowel, you can't just show that, Chris. Yeah. There's like a little alignment dowel. Can you shine your torch in there, bud, please? Just a little pin. A little pin there. It's actually snapped, look. And when Chris actually lifted up the cog, the, sprocket. Other, yeah, the sprocket, the other half of the pin fell out on the yeah. floor. So we're going to move on and try and get that cam carrier off now yeah, i think yeah tell you what though chris that's uh oh is it moving that end it is yes. yeah well that's more like it yes right. will, will it pull off well that turbo is still over the top of the cam carrier so we've got to uh move that out the throttle body we've got to uh we've got to loosen stacking that off a little bit rob i think all right let's crack on and get that done then What you got? Well, on one hand, it's a good thing we can't see any damage, but on the other hand, it's nice if you can see the obvious damage, uh, and then and then you can you can look into repairing it. But there seems to be no damage on this cam carrier at all. But we have had this before, where these lobes do move on these cams on more than one occasion. So that's and then you come in here. And there's no obvious damage to any of those rockers or followers. So the only option we've got is to remove all of those, inspect each one, just see if there's any hairline cracks or anything in them. But they all look, they all look fine. Bit of a strange one, this, isn't it? So we've got to go on the assumption that lobes have moved on the cam carrier, on the camshaft, because. Uh, so thus far there doesn't seem to be any damage on anything but we will take them all out we'll put a straight edge along the top of the valves which ch check each one um, replace it you know uh, refit it and we'll have to we'll have to take we'll have to assume that the camshaft sort of took the took the damage What I was mentioning to you just while we was actually like just sitting yeah. there discussing it is the lady tried to restart this car. And we've tried to. And we? we've tried to. And that is obviously where the problems happened. Yeah. When she's, not when she's turned it off, yeah. when she's gone to restart it. A lot yeah. of people were saying in the comments, you haven't been told the full story. And I think this backs up, I was told the full story. It's... Well, it's hard to know what has happened. As that pin sheared, but if that pin is sheared, the bolt should still hold it. It's only a pin just for, for assembly purposes. It's not a drive pin like a Woodruff key. It yeah. is actually purely just for the purpose of assembly. So I don't think if the pin, but I think it's more likely the bolt come loose and then all the load is on that little pin, which it can never take, and it shears. Yeah. So I think it's most likely... Um, that the bolt, and speaking to Josh, he said he's had it, a couple of the bolt has come undone. Mm. But he said he's had cams where the lobes moved, but he's also had valves that have bent the stem 
and rockers that are broken. We don't seem to have any of those, do we? No. Um, I, don't know, I mean, it. maybe what we've got to do is we take those out, inspect them, and then we're going to have to put this back on and bolt it back down and then see if we can feel any... Any float in there any, at all. Any, yeah, at all, um, which will indicate a pair of lobes have moved. Because you'll always have two either opening or shutting. There'll never be a position where all the valves are shut at the same time. So there, there'll be at least two out of eight valves that will be putting pressure against them. So there won't be any flow in that. It was so minimal on the Bellingo van we done and people said, in the first video, do you remember, they said, you, they don't bend, that's a solid pole and you yeah. put it in the vice and showed yeah, that they, they bend, yeah, you know. it's. Yeah. They're actually, these are, it's this isn't, fit. yeah, this is not a, a, a cut piece of metal. That's cast. The cast, this is, these are actually pressed on a tube. to this hollow tube. So they're pressed on there tight, yes, so that the engine runs, but any hard impact on them and them lobes will move. So, mm. yeah, right, we'll do what you just said then, mate. I think uh, so we've got no other option, really. It's You're right, it would have been nice to have, probably seeing something broken mm. it would have given us more of an idea wouldn't it but yeah I mean, the only other thing i'm thinking right is do you think that sprocket had become disengaged so wherever this is is let's just assume it was there and those two when that when that piston came up and not those it's knocked it round, it's done no damage, it's just opened two on a different cylinder. Yeah. So as that's as that's uh, stationary and those those uh, pistons have come in, in contact with ever which two, it's just done that effectively and done no damage. No. It's just knocked two up, two down, and then continued that process and there might be nothing wrong with that. Yeah. Yeah, you're right, right. Let's, yeah, let's, let's bolt it back on then. And first, you're going to have to get that little pin out of there as well. Yeah. Right, let's do that. But at least now we know what is wrong with it. It, it definitely will not going to start up oh, no, with the inlet. Float, float yeah, with the inlet um, cam not turning whatsoever. But yeah, I, I must admit, couldn't wait to get that off and actually see how many of these was broken. Yeah. And you, you look in there and there's none. And it's it's not disappointing, but it's definitely an head scratcher, isn't it? Yeah. Right, let's carry on. So Chris got the uh, cam carrier, I suppose. Yeah, it is a cam yeah. carrier. Over on the bench and drilled out. Well, managed to get out. You picked it out. Didn't you? The yeah, little bit that was broken. Yeah. He's made a new one up and got that on there. And moving over to the engine. Do you want to explain what you're doing? It'll probably yeah. come across a bit better. Can, do they show up these yeah, rods? They, they do, yeah. Yeah, so they're four equal length uh, brazing rods or gas welding rods cut off, and they're sitting on the tops of the pistons down the injector holes. And the idea of that is just to get the crankshaft in a position whereby all the pistons are level, i.e., halfway down, halfway up. And then that way, when we bolt, which we're only doing temporary, bolt that cam carrier back on there will be some val valves that then are forced open by whatever position the camshaft's in. They won't come into contact with any piston. We've basically got the pistons down out of the way. But Did all, that make sense? Yeah, but they're all bang on at the moment. I they're all level, yeah. yeah. So, so the crank's in a position where two are halfway down and two are halfway, halfway up, up. Effectively level, halfway in the bores. So we are going to pop that back on, that just back to make on. sure there's no float in it. And when we're going to sort of six or eight bolts, bolt it down, aren't we? Yeah. And then we'll see, and there shouldn't be any float in those camshafts. Um, Let's get it back on. Then I don't know. Then. <laughs> yeah. What do we do? I'm just laughing, mate. What Honestly, you got grease all like like the spots of oil. Sorry. It's yeah. almost like there is no damage other than that sprocket yeah so, people are going to ask how we got that level and basically we chucked the car in gear and just right. rocked it That's until it. we yeah. got more bang on so, so turn the engine over yeah um, it's the easiest way to turn it over isn't it definitely right let's chuck that back on then mate
So quite, well, it's, it wasn't hard work, but it was quite a lot of work today, actually getting in there and getting all of that removed. But what, obviously, we'd, we'd just been talking about it, and what we have decided is that kit to time this up was over £900. Josh paid. Yeah. And so we've actually decided what we're going to do. I did speak to Josh again about this and said, look, we've got no damage. We've got no visible damage. He said, Rob, it wouldn't be the first time I've seen that. And you can get lucky. And it looks like there's a good chance we have got lucky. Um, so what we've decided to do is we're actually going to get this dropped off to Josh. We're going to put the... Put the cam carrier back on. Yeah. Quick job, isn't it? And then get Josh to time it up. And me and you are actually going to take a chance because we're going to get him to time it up, pay him, and we're going to put this back together and see if it runs. Mm. Ultimately, that, that is it, isn't it? Yeah. Rather than... Because the next step for us, if we can't do that, is actually pull this engine. Yeah, I think we'd probably take the BPF off. 100%. And get that cleaned. Yeah. Just in case that had any bearing on that camshaft coming undone. I don't see how it could have done, but well, it'd be silly to leave it, wouldn't yeah, it? Yeah, definitely. It's so coming up as a fault. Might so as well get that done as well. But, yeah, time we... I mean, Josh kindly offered to lend us the tools, didn't he? Yeah. But time you go over and get them, and obviously that's got to fit in around him, not needing them. Yeah. And then time you take them back, we might as well pay him, and he's no how. He's so doing them all the time. 30 minutes. 30, 30 minutes, yeah. Yeah. So... Um, yeah, and that way we don't break any of his tools. That's right. Doing something. So, unfortunately, it's not unfortunate, it is all part of it, but that is the end of today's video. Hope you did all enjoy it. Everyone was dying to know what was wrong with this engine in the comments section. I can't wait for the next video. So, that's kind of why we pulled it in and got cracking with it. Number one, everyone wanted to know, and number two, we really wanted to know as well. So, that's how far we've. we've how far we've got with it so far of course if you did enjoy it hit that thumbs up we really do appreciate it share on all your social networking sites and if you haven't subscribed already please consider doing so we'll see you all very very soon in the next one